Welcome to the Knowledge for Men show. Your life will never be the same. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development. I want to die empty of regret. I want to die empty of my best work. We don't understand who we are. Instead, we're living out somebody else's narrative. What one man can do, another man can do. If it's been done, it can be done again. Being yourself and being your truest, most authentic self in every moment. If it scares you or makes you a little afraid, do it. Follow your heart and your gut. The first stage. I think is finding you, like finding out who I am today. Stuff will not work. You will have things that fail. Success is when you're a happy, fulfilled person. How do you define success? It's your life and you are the creator of the movie script that is your life story. Attention, if you are a frustrated man who feels like he is not getting the results he wants in his life, health, wealth, relationships, and personal growth, then I've got a powerful free video training for you to help you become a strong, grounded man so you can unlock unlimited power in your life, business, and relationships. Go to kfmconfidence.com to get instant access to this training. Again, that's kfmconfidence.com. If you want a Cliff Notes version of the best material that I've learned after 300 interviews on this podcast about being a stronger, more powerful man, then it's all here at kfmconfidence.com. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I'm here with Jim Wolf. He's a blogger here at James D. Wolf. This is actually his second time back on the show. He's an author of Level Up, Your Guide to Authentic Confidence, and also Attract Her and Keep Her, his latest book here. Jim, welcome to the show. Hey, Andrew. Thanks so much for having me on, sir. Yep. Let's, let's, let's rock and roll, man. So let's dive in now with a favorite success quote or you know maybe something that's relative to your latest book and how it's helped you. Yeah. One of my favorite quotes is by Albert Einstein. And he said, strive not to be a success, but rather be of value. And the reason I love that so much is it's related to kind of my journey of First of all, starting out trying to be successful as the world defines it, you know, doing well in school, doing well in sports, in college, you know, becoming a part of student government, being president of my fraternity, and all of those kind of external markers of success that we all kind of start striving for, especially in Western culture. And then when I got everything that I thought that I wanted in my life and still felt miserable, that's when kind of things started to change for me into developing my own internal self-worth and trying to be of value to the world from the perspective of the inside out instead of trying to figure out what the world wants and giving it to the world. And so I think it's a complete flip to stop trying to get success, if you will, and to instead try to develop yourself from the inside as much as possible and to provide useful service to the world in a way that's actually needed using your own unique skills and talents and pursuing your own personal vision. I think that's the best possible way to live is to be able to pursue your own vision and at the same time provide actual useful service to the world. And I think that's awesome because uh, you're doing that right now, Andrew. You know, you've got 300 episodes, which is awesome. All you do basically is provide value to the world and help the guys out there who are trying to live a better life and you're providing value for your guests. And so I think you really live this really well. And it's related to a quote that's actually from uh, your re- most recent blog post about your 300, uh, 300th episode, which is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Congratulations, by the way. That's freaking awesome. I can't man. even Seriously. I can't even like believe, you know, 300 has actually happened. That's, that's so many. Like, honestly, your intro here so far in this episode is is like so powerful. I don't even know if it's necessary to keep going. Like, we should just stop at this point i I don't (laughs) like that was so good you were like on a roll i'm just like all right uh what more value can we add but you just follow that then you're gonna be set but it's obviously you have to learn how to do that and i think like your (laughs) your quote about how life is about who you become not what you achieve is is so powerful and I don't know about the guys out there might not know this, but anyone who's done any editing for video or audio knows that it takes about three times as long to edit something as record it. So it's just crazy that you've done uh, 300 episodes, man. It's awesome. Yeah, I can't believe it. And to your quote, literally, I was just speaking right before this, you know, we, we hopped on and started chatting. I was speaking with a woman and she was just telling me how her man used to buy cars, take her on vacations 
would buy her jewelry, clothes, whatever. It's not like they were super rich. It's not. It's not like this is like Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt here. But she, they're right. just. She, he was trying to, you know, sh- give off the aura of success, if you will, to her, and she's like. It was nice. Don't get me wrong. I, I I like my, you know, what is it? D and G, you know, Dulce Gabbana bag. Don't get me wrong. I like it. But it never really made me fall for him. What made me fall for him is when he actually cared about me. And that didn't cost anything. Yeah. And, you know, I, I love that because this quote that, I, that we brought up right, um, also right. applies to my book and talking about relationships, which is what you just brought up, which is totally perfect because we see, and it makes sense that a guy would do that, right? Because a lot of times on TV and movies, we see that we have the impression that guys who have a lot of money attract the women that they want. And it's just not true. Women who are not shallow, which is most of them, don't really care too much about that stuff. Of course, if they have to choose between two men with the same internal qualities that maybe one is a billionaire and one is poor, maybe they'll choose the billionaire guy, of course. And so would we probably. But that's not the main thing that attracts women. And once you switch from trying to get women, just like trying to get success, once you switch that mindset to, okay, how can I actually give women genuine value from their perspective? Because they value a lot different things than we do. And if you start thinking of it as a man, you're not actually going to be providing her with value. And if you provide her uh, value from the male perspective, then she's going to be attracted to you and she's going to stay attracted to you. And so we just have to learn what that is and then give it to them. And it's, it requires that switch of mindset from I'm going to try to get women to I have self-worth on my own. I am attractive. And from this place of power, I'm going to see uh, what kind of value I can provide to the women out there and see who responds to that. This is powerful for all men, whether they're single or in a relationship or married. This this conversation here, because this is really about not trying to not trying to give and, and 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 trying to like trying to like give things in order to be successful in terms of like external things and instead yep. being a stronger grounded man that could add value to her life and and that's what you know I was just reading a book mate and and that's like what he's saying inside the whole book there wait mate with it's who is who is that uh, Tucker Max and then the, oh, uh, yeah. the the psychologist or the uh, the evolutionary psychologist and he's like, basically, you know, find out what women want and then give it to them. And, exactly. And, and, and it's not these things that social media, you know, often states what what they want. Her, her primal emotional brain has no idea what a million dollars looks like or a block of gold. Or they don't care about that. So, yeah, it's, it's socially constructed. And, and just interesting fact of, of my day is, is discovering that this supermodel, Emily Ratajkowski, her boyfriend is just like this most random dude ever. If anyone doesn't know who she is, likely you do. But uh, if you Google her, she's just this absolutely gorgeous supermodel. And I was looking at you know this post and I was like, that's her boyfriend? And it's just this random guy in LA, not successful in any way. His name's not... And you can't even Google and find anything about him, but he's, he's just a regular dude. And so my friend's like, hey, like, what's up with that? Like, what's going on there? And I'm like, this is a dude that's probably really like, he's probably a fun guy. He probably adds a lot of value to her that not a lot of guys can do because she's so beautiful. And and this is a guy who's, who it probably gives her uh, something that she cannot get from other men because they're so like, Oh, like wowed by her looks. Absolutely. And on the flip side, I know a lot of guys who have a big house or they have a job that um, allows them to make a lot of money. And they still are not that successful with women, at least uh, as much as they want to be. So it goes both ways, right? Like it's not the external things that really attract her. Uh, Maybe initially she could turn around and pay attention to you because you have a sweet car. But really, it's like, who cares if you have a Ferrari if you don't completely love yourself and have that internal masculine strength that is the real value you can provide? Yeah, yeah. It's and and not to ha- make this conversation sound like we're saying okay now don't you know cut your goals you actually don't need to be financially successful you don't need you need to like tear <laughs> you know your vision board tear off that house that car I think you want to 
be successful if that if that's your goal be successful but do it for you not exactly. hoping and expecting that hey once i arrive here five or ten years from now and grind like a slave in my you know like just work crazy and hoping that on the other end of that rainbow there's just all these women waiting for me it's it's painful experience to to, to get there and find out that there is no one there for you this is such a perfect switch to talk about for not only just success in life, but also for dating. So, you know, it's we have we tend to have the mindset of I'll be happy when I get X, you know, like when right. I get the raise, I'll be happy when right. I get this car. I'll be Well, I mean, I don't know about you, but I've actually had this thought before, like, oh, when I have a better car, I'll get more women or whatever. And so <laughs> I think it's really natural for guys to think, oh, once I have this perfect job, then I can get the woman that I want. Or once I uh, have this perfect car, then she'll like me. Well, I think it's really important to first accept yourself exactly as you are and acknowledge your infinite internal value, your self-worth. I think it's a huge shift to start valuing yourself instead of trying to get that from the outside. And once you live from that place, that's where you really want to go for your goals because your goals are your goals, not the goals of the people around you or the society around you. So as long as you are operating from the inside out, you should strive to be as successful as possible. But if you're coming from a place of trying to seek that validation from the external world, whether it's just validation in general, or you're trying to get a certain kind of woman in your mind, and you think you need that next thing to get her or to be happy, once you flip that to I'm already acceptable and valuable right now, I'm already happy, and then continue to go after your genuine goals, I think that's kind of the best way to live and also the best way to date. Absolutely. I, I think it's a, a powerful way to, to live your life because it is one dictated by you. And, yep. and often we live our lives and it's dictated by our parents, our, our family, our friends, society being obviously a big one, social media, you know, telling us that we need to have this or that. Um, I think it really gives off that, that aura that we need to move in that direction in order to be successful. But I, I think we really, I think the most powerful thing a guy can do is really sit down and define success for himself and, and really own that sentence. Like, what does success yep. mean to you? And if you struggle with that and you're working your ass off, well, then what are you doing? Like, yeah. if you actually can't, what are you working towards if you can't even define success for yourself? Exactly. 100%. There's only two ways to live. You can create a vision for yourself and pursue it and have that vision kind of pull you forward. Or you can be pulled around by everything going on in society. There's only really two options. And the guy who creates a vision for his own life and pursues it and doesn't give that up and has his own direction for himself is going to be a hundred times more naturally attractive than a guy who is just being pulled around by the world. All right. So this leads to the next thing here, because then you can find it. I don't want to confuse with, confuse this with, okay, so now I'm a man on my purpose and I have defined success for myself. I know what I want and now I'm moving towards it. But, you know, six months goes by and I'm still either frustrated in my relationship or I'm still single. Yeah. So we, we can't, even though you're on your path and purpose, even though you're moving towards what you want in life and you're a strong grounded man, you still got to learn how to approach. That's exactly right. Uh, and so you have to learn dating and relationship skills in addition to everything else, because that area of life is a, a specific skill. So you can be really successful in business and not know anything about dating and relationships. And so it's just something that you have to learn, just like everything else that you're doing. And I think that in our culture, we're kind of just expected to know how to do it. But really, here's the thing that, that really gets to me. And the reason why I wrote this book, Attract and Keep Her, I used to really care about the divorce rate. We all have heard, you know, it's been around 50% for the past few decades and it used to kind of bother me that so many people were getting divorced. But I don't really want to help people stay married. I don't think it's a goal in life to get married or to stay married. What I want to help people do is to build a relationship that's satisfying to them. That's something that they want to be part of. And so it's kind of like the movement from psychology to positive psychology, where the old school psychology was about taking people who had conditions and trying to make them come up to zero or what they considered normal at the top of the bell curve. And then positive psychology came in uh, 10 or 20 years ago and said, 
Why don't we take people from where they're at and move them forward in a positive direction? And that's what I want to do with relationships. I don't want to help people stay in a relationship, especially if they hate it. I want to help people build uh, relationships that they enjoy that are deeply satisfying. And so that's why I wrote this book, because right now the stats show that only 10 to 30 percent of relationships are happy, healthy and functional. So forget the divorce rate. That means 70 to 90 percent of relationships are not happy, healthy, and functional. So we have a big problem right now with relating to each other. And I think that's actually a huge opportunity for us to learn how to do it better because, you know, we live so much longer than ever before. We're so much wealthier than ever before. And we have the time and resources to work on this area of life. And the thing is, Andrew, you know, it's not a requirement for childbirth to have a good relationship. It's just not part of survival. You know, you don't have to have a great relationship that you enjoy to have children. And so it's not a necessity for us. It's something that we have to care about and learn about if that's something that we want. So what exactly is the point here is I'm trying to put this together. Like I, sure, sure. I understand that you, you're saying the, it's, the goal is not necessarily to stay in a relationship. Right. Right. And that, but you, you want people to be happy while they're in their relationships. Yes, exactly. Okay. And then the whole thing about bringing up the kids was saying that just just because you have kids doesn't mean that you have to stay in that relationship for the rest of your life. Well, it, I mean, that, is, is that what you're saying? I, I guess that's a that's a part of it. But what I'm saying is your body and your brain naturally rewards you for certain things, right? Like if you're hungry and you eat, you get a reward. And so when you're out there dating, your mind is not looking for a woman who's going to be a quality partner for you. <laughs> That's not what you're naturally going to be looking for in the environment. You have to train yourself to look for the characteristics in a woman that will allow you to have a satisfying relationship. And you also have to develop those within yourself. So what I was saying with the survival thing is you're not going to automatically just pick the right woman for you. Your brain is looking for very specific things that have to do with survival and having children. Right. And they don't have too much to do with having an actual good relationship. Right. So it's like really the characteristics that would make for a great relationship, like integrity, like trust, mm -hmm. like career. Mm -hmm. She's like goal oriented. She's driven. She's loving. Those are more secondary like, of course, we care about them. Some people might be like, no, of course, that's what I lead with. But but really, like primarily, at a primal level, we look for obviously the physical attributes is what catches our attention first. Exactly. 100%. And you have to train yourself to look for the exact specific things uh, that allow you to have the relationship that you want. And again, you have to develop those qualities within yourself as well. It's not just a one way street. So how do we do that? Good question. So there are four things that if a woman is initially interested in you will cause her to be more interested in you if you display them over time. Uh, and then there are four things that will keep her feeling strongly emotionally in love with you once you get her there, if you manage to get her there in the first place. And those are all things that you can learn. But let me do you want to talk about the things that we should look for in a woman or what, what do you think would be the most value? Yeah, let's let's go into you said there's four things that you know, would get her more interested in you. And then once you achieve this stage, it sounds like there's four more things that keep her loving you. Exactly. Yeah. And they're different things. That's the thing. Like, not only do you have to learn the attraction skills, you also have to learn the relationship skills that keep her satisfied over time. Right. And they're, th I'm they're things that you can learn. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, sir. I am glad that you made that distinction because I think what a lot of guys find when they get into so-called seduction or they start really working on their dating life and they see results, meaning they are getting phone mm -hmm. numbers, they are going out, they are dating, they're going on multiple dates, but then yep. something keeps happening at around that six-month point when they can't keep it going. And then because they have that skill of knowing how to attract more women, it almost becomes a crutch because they can always go, oh, well, I just go out and get more women. But maybe the problem is not, you know, maybe the problem is that they don't know how to keep that relationship moving forward, which is a different skill set. That's exactly right, Andrew. And the thing is, for me, like, that was my main issue. You know, in high school, I didn't really try to have a girlfriend at all. I was, you know, pretty, I'm above average looking. And I was 
I lifted weights a lot and stuff like that. So I didn't have too much problem with the initial phase, which is where a lot of guys come into learning about this stuff. And I totally understand that. But for me, I, if I decided that I like someone, I couldn't really keep her around. I didn't know how to do that. And that was really painful once I actually started wanting that. And so that's why about 13 years ago, I started studying dating and relationships. And that luckily for me, that was before the game came out. That was before the men's community. And so I learned it from a little bit different perspective. And then I also, you know, I still kept learning through this whole time of the development of the, the men's community. And so I've learned from that as well. But because I started a little bit before that, I have a little bit more well-rounded knowledge about how to keep a woman in love. And then that's also what I focused on for my master's degree. I focused on relationship satisfaction and how to kind of build that. Uh, and so that's kind of what I bring to the table for a guy. Like there are a lot of coaches out there that can teach you the initial attraction phase. And it's really important to learn that. Like you said, there's no avoiding it. Eventually you have to approach. So definitely take care of that. And there are a lot of great coaches out there that can help you with that. Um, that's not really my strength. My strength is what happens the week after you approach her? What happens two years later? How do you keep that going if that's something that you want? That's what I do. So let's go into the four things that get her more interested in you once she has some interest in you, once she has some attraction, base level attraction. Absolutely. So the, the first two are things we've already kind of touched on a little bit. And the first one is high internal value, your own self-worth and self-esteem, but as expressed through your dating behaviors. Yeah, okay. And so go for ahead. example, like a couple of things that the guys can apply right now that's related to uh, self-worth, self-esteem, and kind of not seeking external validation are uh, number one, stop trying to convince her to like you. Like that guy who's buying her stuff, that's just him trying to convince her to like him. Instead, flip your mindset to she already likes me. Now I'm going to see if she's a good fit for me, if we're a good fit for each other. Like very, very approval seeking when you're like literally trying to buy her things or trying to convince her where maybe you are someone who does have money, but you yep. keep talking about it rather than yep. let, letting her uncover that. Exactly. You want her to discover that on her own and and you want to ask her questions about who she is and find out if she's right for you. And just that one switch in your conversations is going to be really powerful for you. And then another thing you can do conversationally to show your high self-worth. And actually, when you do these things, it's awesome because it reinforces your self-esteem and your self-worth. So you can build that on your own. And then when you act this way, it also reinforces it, which is cool. Uh, but another thing that you can do is when you're telling a story, if like the waitress interrupts you or someone else interrupts you or she stops you or she starts talking about something else, never continue telling the story, no matter how awesome you think it is, unless she asks you to. And that demonstrates a lot of great qualities. And it basically shows her that you don't need to convince her to, to like you. It's a really subtle thing, but it's a pretty easy thing that you can be aware of and start doing today. So what is what is really behind that? Like what is what is behind that? Because that, that would be an example of something that's much deeper. Sure. Yeah. So a lot of times guys think that they're going to impress a woman with their conversation or their good story. So they have a really awesome story that makes them look really awesome. And so they're telling the story and they're really excited about it. And they think that if they get this story out, she's going to like him more. And so if it gets interrupted, he gets really messed up by that. And what I'm saying is, it, once you flip your mindset to you don't need to convince her to like you, you can just let that story go and let the conversation flow. And your ability to do that shows her that you have high internal value and she will agree with that value. She'll tend to agree with your own assessment of yourself. And so she'll see you as more highly valuable. She might not notice it consciously. A lot of these things are unconscious, of course. She's not going to be thinking about this in the front of her mind. But in the back of her mind, she will feel more attracted to you. So overall trust that you are enough and that the story is not what is going to make you enough. It, it is you. A hundred percent. Yep. Okay. Is that all four? These are four things to get her more interested? No. So that's that's number one, high internal value. Oh, these are uh, all just examples of number one. All right. Yeah. I, well, I, I want guys to have some practical things that yeah. can apply. You know? Yeah, we're okay. in for it. Yeah, we got good stuff coming out here. Okay. The second one is internal strength. And this is basically not reacting to what she's doing or the environment, your ability to walk away if necessary, and your ability to say no to her if necessary. 
So it sounds kind of unromantic, but honestly, she has to know without you telling her specifically that you would be able to leave her if it's necessary. And that makes her more attracted to you. So that internal strength, your ability to be enough on your own, and also be comfortable expressing your interest. But ultimately, if you're able to walk away, just like in a negotiation, that increases her interest in you. And she has to know it without you saying that. You can't just say, oh, if you do this, I'll leave. No, you have to reinforce your boundaries with your actions. Yeah. Yeah. And what would you, what do you think is beyond that there? So her knowing that you're able to walk away. What? Well, there's... <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of deep psychology there, of course. And, you know, like this goes into negotiations. The human mind, the, the unconscious mind is very sensitive to value. And if if someone is negotiating with you and they're able to walk away or they do walk away, you start to like them more. Or you start to value that thing more. That's just the way that we're wired. There's no way we can help that. So it's scarcity. Yeah, exactly. Like, exactly. Uh, and it shows your value. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's, it's a way of influence. It also reinforces your internal value, though, because if she does something that's a true deal breaker for you and you don't walk away, that's going to lower your self-worth. Right. Yeah. And e even if it doesn't work out with her because you walked away, you're going to be more attractive to the next woman that you meet and you're going to like yourself more if you do that. Yeah, I think I think that's that's really huge. If she does something wrong and it's very clear that that's something wrong and you just put up with it. Exactly. And I think a lot of men do that because she's attractive physically or whatever. And I just think that that diminishes your self-worth and makes you less attractive. If if you can't stand up for yourself. I mean, that's just... Or if she witnesses that from... Maybe she's not even involved, but she witnesses you not standing up for yourself in some sort of... you know, Maybe it's you and a friend or you and an employee or something at work. It, it can be similar too. That's exactly right. And the thing is, the only woman that will stay with you if you are acting that way a lot over time is a woman who wants to control you and doesn't really want to have necessarily a, a good kind of relationship with you. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Keep keep moving on here. So internal sure. strength and then uh, what's next? Yeah. Here? Well, one thing that guys can do to apply that really quick okay. is yeah. if, if a woman is giving you a hard time, it's probably not because she's not interested in you. Most of the time, if a woman is not interested in you, she'll completely ignore you and try to avoid you. So one way that you can display internal strength that works, whether she's interested in you or not, is if she's giving you a hard time or she's putting you down or she's teasing you, take everything that she says as a huge compliment and respond to it that way. That's really powerful. And if you do that, when you first meet a woman, she's giving you kind of a hard time and you treat it as the biggest compliment you've ever gotten. That's really powerful. And I, I want you guys to try that as soon as possible and see what happens. Let's, uh, let's do an example. So if I'm making fun of you, I'm like, Hey, like you're, you're, the, you live in the middle of nowhere. You're, you're like, I don't even know your height, but you're, you're really short and you, <laughs> you have no hair. You're, it looks like, you know, you're basically bald and like what, so how would you apply that? So the audience I can better understand. I would say if I was flirting with you, Andrew, I'd say something like, oh, Andrew, you're so sweet, man. That's so nice. Has anyone has any have I told you lately how sweet you are? I see. You know, like you just ignore what they say and re reply as if it was a compliment. All right. And you it. can you can also you can exaggerate it too. like if a girl says, oh, you're such a player or whatever. You can say, yeah, you know, you should have seen me with all the nuns last week or whatever. You know, like just don't <laughs> just don't defend yourself. That's the key. You know, like just pretend that she's complimenting you. That's the so, best thing you can do. So by defending yourself, you're putting yourself in a kind of lower state because you're having to defend yourself against someone that you just met. Yeah. And she's trying to see how you'll react. She's not actually really putting you down. Her subconscious mind is testing you. And when you respond to that as if she's complimenting you, because in your reality, you're just so awesome, then she's going to respond to that. And she's going to be like, oh, finally, I met a guy who's comfortable with himself. Got it. All right. And moving on, number three. Yeah. Number three is pre-selection. And this gets talked about a lot in the community. It's this is really interesting for men because if you're sitting there in a restaurant or something and a really good looking woman walks in by herself and then in another scenario, that same woman walks in with 10 like really nicely dressed men, we don't think of the second woman as more attractive or at least we tend not to. However, <laughs> if you walk into a place by yourself 
And then later you walk into the same venue with five or six good looking women around you, you are going to be perceived as more attractive to women. And that's why it's so hard for guys to understand this because it doesn't really affect us the same way. Uh, And so she likes you more if she thinks other women on her level are also attracted to you. Yeah, it's interesting because we we as men would probably prefer a woman to walk in by herself. <laughs> Absolutely, because <laughs> it means yeah. it means she's not with anyone, and like there's an opportunity to talk. But with with if a man walks in by himself, it shows all right, cool a guy. But if a man walks in with maybe even there's other other guys too, and then there's other women, it shows that there's wow, he's he's got this social circle here. Exactly, and the thing is because women tend to look a little bit more for internal qualities that might signal that you're going to be around to help with the kids. You know, that's kind of like the subconscious motivator possibly because they're kind of looking a little bit deeper into personality. It's really hard to tell who someone is in a quick way. So they have to test you. That's why she might give you a hard time to test you. Like we talked about in the last one. Uh, And so her mind has to throw tests your way to see how you react to them, to see who you are as a man. However, she also knows subconsciously that other women all have that same mind. And if other women are with you already, you have already passed those same tests with all those other women. So it's a shortcut for her brain to decide how attractive you are. Yeah. And I think for men to really understand this even potentially deeper, I think if you remember the time when you were interviewing someone and you have to ask them very tough questions because you want to see how this candidate is going to respond under difficult stress or under stressful situations that pertain to the job. So yep. like when I'm interviewing someone, I ask, I trick them with questions because I want to see how they're going to handle them. Because if, if they can handle these, then likely, you know, they're, they, they pass a lot of other tests that, that I could have said. But because I need to limit my time, I don't want to spend hours here. I just want to spend 15 minutes. I'm going to throw some big curveballs at you. And if you pass, then you can move forward. So I think for men, it's like, okay, I got it. Yeah, I do that. I do that. Or I've been in an interview and someone's done that. And that's kind of what these tests are for women as well. They, there's a yep. short amount of time and they've got to see if you're the real deal or if they should keep walking. Yep. And you're going to, you're probably going to check that person's Facebook and social media accounts and all that kind of stuff to get a feel for who they are. But if you're interviewing someone and you know, they have job offers from five other companies that are equal to you, yeah. you're probably going to try harder to, to get them and be more attracted to them, I guess, in that, yeah. that context. You would probably pay them more too than if they yeah. weren't. You would probably underpay, but no, well, uh, depends on who the person is or the job. But in, right, in, in right. general, you would probably be in a better position to underpay if no one's offering this guy a job versus if there's four people offering this guy a job, then obviously they must know something that I don't. I'm willing to pay 10%. 15% more than industry standard. Right. It's all about their perceived value. And that's what pre-selection is about. And so to apply that to your life, anytime you're in any situation, you can just ask yourself, if you genuinely liked this woman and you also had five, six, seven, eight other women on her level that you like just as much who were responding to your texts, who were going out with you, or maybe even they're asking you out. If you also had five, six, seven, eight other women on her exact level, what would you do then? And that's a really good marker for how to display pre-selection in your dating behavior. And I just want to point out one last thing about pre-selection that I think is important. There's a difference between going after every woman and pre-selection. So it's a turn on if she thinks every woman is coming after you, but it's a turn off if she thinks you're chasing every woman. So then I think in that situation, some guys might be thinking, all right, well, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Like, well, how Mm -hmm. am I going to get, you know, three or four girls to be walking around with me? Like I'm Don Juan over here before I walk walk in that venue when when I'm struggling to get this one. That's such a great point, Andrew. And the thing is, you don't have to actually have the five other women with you for pre-selection to work for you. All you have to do is act as if that's true. And if all of your, the thing is, if you actually had five options, you would go slower. You wouldn't be so concerned if she's not texting you back right now. And so those are all kind of things that guys learn as like game tactics or whatever. And I don't really like too much to go into that. But if you just figure out how would you really act if you really had five women that you like pursuing you 
and you just start acting that way right now, even though it's not actually happening in your real life, the more you act that way, the more likely it is to happen. And then you can get that ball moving. And it's going to help you when you're out on a date with a woman that you really like to kind of take your time and go slower and be patient. And the thing is, it takes longer for women's feelings to develop for you. Even if they like you a lot initially, it takes about 60 days for her to feel what we call love for you. And so you have to be a lot more patient because for us, I mean, like we can see a woman and and basically not really be in love with her, but we can have really strong feelings for her like in one second, you know, but for women, she has to catch up to you. So you have to let her catch up. And one of the ways to do that is to be more patient. And one way to be more patient is to think about what would you actually do if you had a lot of options? Yeah. Yeah. I say in my book, The Dating Playbook for Men, that men are like light switches where you just turn it on, we're ready. And women yeah. women are like, you know, big stereo volume knobs where you got to slowly turn it up. And uh, it, it, it takes a lot longer for uh, for that attraction to build. Whereas men, you know, pretty, pretty much we, we can make a decision. You know, if, if like if you're on Tinder, you can make a decision like swipe, 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 swipe. swipe. Whereas a woman may do that as well, but just that's how the app is designed, but generally would pay more attention to what you actually put in your profile. I love the volume knob thing. That's such a good analogy. And even if she's starting out at volume nine, you still have to keep it there for a couple of months before it's permanent feelings. Yeah. So the volume knob can fluctuate. And that's a, that's an important distinction is as uh, if a light switch for a guy, it's on and it it stays on, uh, but the yeah. volume knob can fluctuate and go down. It, it goes, it's like a wide, it's like a roller coaster for, for, uh, for a woman based off of some of the things we're talking about here. Right. And if she likes you initially, her knob is going to go up and down based exclusively on your behavior. Unless of course she's dating other men, but when it comes to you, your behavior is going to turn that knob up or down. Yeah. So not the things that you have. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Very good distinction. There is that the, the, the internal is, is what is really going to drive it like to that next level, the external, whereas it may be able to get you to that next nod or so the internal can really take you from level two to 10. Well, and then you'll be able to sustain it. Like, look, you can learn all these dating behaviors and they'll work for you, but If you don't have the underlying kind of internal strength to back that up, you might not be able to maintain it for a long time. And that's really what's required if you want to date someone for a long time. Uh, Yeah. So it's kind of (laughs) like we just keep going. We have like all these analogies because I'm trying to make it more. (laughs) But it's kind of like think of it like you can learn it. So it'd be kind of like you put a uh, grab a a car and, and put NOS in it, it'll go fast for a while, but eventually that engine is going to blow up because the engine is not built. The foundation, the internal strength of that engine can't handle that amount that that you're that you're moving at whereas if you had let's say a v8 and it's a stronger more built out engine with a strong internal foundation it it can handle it and it can hold it and in fact it'll 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 perform better i love that you're like the king of analogies dude i know (laughs) this is the analogy podcast from now all on it's just back and forth me and you are going no this analogy this analogy but all right so we got we got three of them here high internal value uh being able to walk away we got pre-selection which is kind of like social validation and then the fourth one here this is kind of like the secret weapon and it's called yeah yeah Ooh, ding 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 this is this is something that's hard for men to understand as well. Unless, of course, you know, if you have studied dating at all, you probably have heard this term. But if you never have, it's usually something that's like a really big light bulb for men. And it's called challenge. And basically, challenge means that she has to earn your attention. And this is a huge flip for guys because... In every other area of life, it's really important to go for it, go for it, go for it, go for it, take action, take action, take action, right? You don't succeed in football if you don't try to push over the end zone. Uh, You don't succeed in business unless you take action to uh, provide more value to the world. But when it comes to dating, it's important to allow the woman to chase you. Your job is to set up the the, the dynamic and to lead the situation where you give her space and time to chase you a little bit. That's what challenge is. Challenge basically means that you're not so easy. You make her earn your attention. And a little bit of this goes a long way. So in the dating community, they talk a lot about push pull. I'm sure you've heard about that. Right. And most guys who are trying to date who've never learned anything are just all pull, 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 meaning 
they're only validating the woman. They're only uh, doing everything they can to try to get her. Whereas if you push her away a little bit, not physically, obviously, but if you kind of give her a compliment, for example, and then you follow it up with a little bit of a fun challenge where you're kind of trying to get her to go a little higher, that can be really powerful. And on the other hand, you know, when you're on a date and you have a really good time, it's really hard not to text her a million times after that date. But if you give her a little time and space to think about you, to wonder about you, uh, that's going to go a long way to increasing her interest for you. You actually gain the most points on that knob that you've been talking about that turns her interest up. You gain the most points on that meter when you're not with her. That's the key. When you're with her, you can lower her interest or you can raise it. When you're not with her and she, she has no communication from you, it's, you can't lower her interest unless you're in front of her or you're texting her. So when you send her a text, you can lower her interest, but it, it's, you can either raise or lower her interest with the text. But if you don't send her one, her interest can only go up to a certain point. And that's, that sounds kind of complicated, but let me, let me make it a little more clear. If you take two versions of yourself and you go on a date with a woman and you really enjoyed yourself and you had a great time. And at the end of the date, you say, when can I see you again? Versus the second version of yourself that has a great time on the date and says, hey, thanks so much for the good time. And then you go away for a little while. Maybe you send her one text later saying, hey, I had a good time tonight, smiley. And that's it. And then, you know, in a few days, you ask her out again and you plan the date. It's a specific time, day and activity. You're the one who's uh, leading that. But you wait a little bit and you don't ask her to be the logistical coordinator. You don't ask her to plan the date. You don't ask her when you can meet up again. You just, after a few days, say, hey, can you meet up at 7 o'clock on Thursday? I want to go to the comedy show or whatever it is. If you do that, that version of yourself is going to be much more attractive than the version of you that says, hey, when can we meet up again? Or you start texting her a thousand times after your date. Yeah. And don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you have to play games or like you know, completely disappear. You can text her back and forth a little bit, but the less contact that you have in between dates, the better, because not only can she think about you and try to figure you out and you're kind of an attractive mystery to her, uh, it also shows, hey, maybe you're a successful guy. Maybe you have a lot of things going on. You like her and you still have other things to do. You like her and maybe you have other options. She doesn't know. Maybe she's competing for you. Uh, and so it's, it's a really fine line between playing games and being a challenge. But the more you allow her to chase you, the better it is for you. Because look, if you wait a couple of days before you text her and she texts you first, now she's chasing you. And if she's te actively texting you, if she actually decides to ask you out, you know, sometimes she'll get a little frustrated and actually ask you out like, hey, let's meet up or she'll hint at it. If she's doing that, she can't also reject you at the same time. So we want to give her the time and space to allow her to chase us. And that's really hard for men to get their head around because they're like, oh, if I don't text her, someone else is going to get her or I have to hurry and text her back or she'll go away or she'll forget about me. No, 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 no. It's the opposite. Give it the time and space to grow so that in two months she'll be in love with you instead of getting rid of you instead of getting rid of you after two or three dates. Right. Or just stops responding. I, I think what, exactly. helps, what helps me in this situation is just to be someone who is naturally busy and has a social yep. life. And you are obviously, if you are single, you are dating. There are other women that you are also talking to. There is not just this one egg in the basket where if this fails, then you are going to never have kids or get married <laughs> where it's you genuinely have a lot going on and you are thinking about other people in your life and you just met this girl. So why would you give all of her attention to her? Because you just met her and that would be kind of weird since you have other people that have been in your life for years or potentially most of your life. Exactly. And just like we talked about before, learning this as kind of a tactic will work. But like you say, it's a million times better if you actually do value yourself and your time, if you actually do have other good options, if you actually are busy pursuing your vision and providing value to the world. And so again, there's kind of the behavioral aspect that you can just fake, but then there's the deeper aspect that you can develop behind it. And I think it's important to develop both. Yeah, it's kind and of then, the chicken or the egg. And obviously, in that situation, you might have to do a little, 
pretending for a while until until it really starts until you start cultivating that that lifestyle that you're looking for. But but I, yeah. I think there is it's kind of like if your time is always available where she's like, hey, are you available? You're like, yes. You're like, yes, I'm there. I can come now. Actually, <laughs> you're like, I'm, I'm out front. What do you mean? Am I available? <laughs> where yeah. you it, it feels kind of like. Like, 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 I almost want to say like, like a private club, perhaps where Mm -hmm. like you can't get in all the time and it feels awesome when you're in, when you know that it's hard to get in. And, and that's how she can feel about your life. Like, oh man, I'm, I'm spending time with him. This is, this is great. She'll value your time and your request. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Hey, comedy club 7 PM. It's like, oh, that doesn't come every Monday through Friday. I should probably respond to that. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, look, I I would love it if you could just walk up to a woman and say, Hey, I really like you. Let's date. You should be my girlfriend. And if that would work, I would love that. Wouldn't we all love that? It probably did a hundred years ago or maybe maybe. 50, 50 years ago. It, it may have actually in smaller towns, small communities, the way that we were supposed to be, it may have, where you could just walk up to a girl confidently, ask her out. She says yes. And then it moves on. But we live in a world where, You've got the you got hundreds and thousands and millions of people in a town, and it, there, there's a lot of options. Yeah, exactly, and especially you know if she's really good looking, she's going to have a lot of guys pursuing her, and you have to differentiate yourself. And the way to differentiate yourself is not pursue her like every other man is trying, and give her a little space to pursue you a little bit. That's the key. And one one way to apply this to your life right now is favors. So if you are not her official boyfriend and she asks you for a big favor, do not do it. She has friends that can help her move across town, for example, or to mow her lawn or to wax her car. This sounds kind of silly, but women actually do this to test you. And so if she asks you for a big favor in that first couple of months before you're officially together, don't do those big favors for her. That's one way to kind of be a challenge. And if she asks you for a small favor, like to hold her purse or whatever, you can do that stuff, but make sure you get something also. Don't be so easy. So if she says, hey, can you hold my purse while I go to the restroom? Be like, yeah, sure. Can you get me a drink from the bar on your way back? You know, just, or at least make sure she says please. So get something, at least a please out of her to do a small favor. And on the big favors, don't do them until you're her official boyfriend. Once you're officially together, obviously you can help her move across town if you want to. But before that, don't do it. And that's one way to be a challenge that will work for you. Interesting points here. Have you ever felt like you weren't the strong grounded man that you know you're capable of becoming? Like there's something more inside of you, but you don't know how to get it out. Me too. Years ago, I was broke, sleeping on my brother's couch and just got out of a serious breakup that left me on the floor for months. Now I have a multiple six figure business. I'm in the best shape of my life, have an abundant dating life and live on the beach here in San Diego. I want you to break through too and create the life that you want. And because people kept asking me so many questions, I've created this free video training series on becoming a strong, grounded man so that you can have more freedom, love, and connection in your life. I'll also teach you how to build real backbone to boost your masculinity as a man so that you can have more respect, power, and confidence personally and professionally. Simply go to kfmconfidence.com to get this training. Again, that's kfmconfidence.com. Also, I share the number one conversation that your father never had with you about women. That will be a major wake-up call for 90% of you and will improve the quality of your relationships forever. Go to kfmconfidence.com to get this free training today. Welcome to the Knowledge Round, where the guests will be asked rapid-fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives, starting in three, two, one, showtime. All right, Jim, so let's dive now into the four things that you need to keep her loving you, and then we'll just keep it brief because I know we're having such a good time in the beginning. I know this whole show has been very value add, so I, you know, I want to continue on and get these next four things because once you have her attention, that's one thing, but we want her, we want to keep her if we really enjoy this woman, we really like this woman. So what are those four things? Exactly. So if you want a girlfriend or a wife and you want her to stay in love with you, After you've demonstrated high internal value, internal strength, pre-selection, and challenge for a couple of months, let's say, she will be what we call in love with you. And once you get her to that point, which is extremely high interest in you, 
then there are four things that will keep her in love as long as you keep doing them and as long as she's relatively uh, psychologically healthy. Uh, and so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, him. like, well, <laughs> okay. the, the thing is, like, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily work if she has major, major, major issues. But, okay. you know, for a majority of women, this will keep them in love if she gets there in the first place. And by the way, most wives are not completely in love with their husbands, just so you know. So it's important to do those four things first to get her to this point, And then it will work. If she's not completely in love with you, these things won't work as well at all. All right. Good note. OK. So this is the switch. So the, the four things that keep her in love, the first one I call positive attention. And this is probably the most important one in terms of dating. And so positive attention means basically no matter how busy you get, no matter how many kids you have, no matter what's happening in your life or how crazy it is, you must keep dating her. And not only that, not only must you keep taking her out and keep planning the dates yourself and asking her out, uh, you also have to have a fun time. So your challenge is to have a fun time with your girlfriend or wife. I would say once a week. I I think that's a good amount. It might be hard for some people to do that. So I would never go more than once a month without taking your girlfriend or wife out for a really fun time and not talking about anything serious, just having fun with her. That time is really important to maintain those positive emotions over time. So keep dating her or some other guy might start dating her if you don't. So keep taking her out. All right. Yeah, really good. Yeah. When she wants to show you something, you know, like when you're watching the the NFL game or you're watching your favorite show and she comes in the room and wants to show you something that she bought or she wants to point something out when you're in an airplane or something like that, always give her that like 20 to 30 seconds of attention. And that is a huge, a really important thing that's also small. So give her that 30 seconds of positive attention when she asks for it. And that's going to go a long way toward maintaining her positive feeling towards you. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing that keeps her in love is respect. And we all kind of know what respect means in general. But in a context of your relationship, make her look good in public. Don't put her down in front of other people. Don't put her down in general. Don't yell at her. Obviously, you never want to hit her. I shouldn't have to say that, but respect her as a person. And another thing that's involved in that is not checking out other women when you're out with her. Look, women know that you are going to continue to be attracted to other women when you're with them. But if you are in a committed relationship, when you are with her, don't check out other women. That shows her respect. And she she might not notice it consciously, but she will feel it. And so respect, if you respect her, that's the second thing that keeps her in love. When she has a silly idea, don't put it down. Tell her that you'll support her and that you will do it with her together. Okay, so if you give her positive attention and respect, those are two of the four things that will keep her in love. And then the third thing is positive humor. So we all know life is tough. And the thing, the reason I say positive humor is because if you use humor in a negative way, it's actually a detriment to your relationship. So if you put her down, if you put yourself down, if you put other people down, If you use humor to avoid dealing with issues, those are all negative things that will bring your relationship down. However, if you have an attitude where you never take yourself or life too seriously and you have kind of a backdrop of of playfulness, that's going to provide a really solid positive buffer for the things that happen in life that could damage your relationship. And so positive humor use has been shown to help you maintain a woman's positive feelings for you over time. Yeah. Uh, so the biggest tip for guys here, honestly, is to cut the self-deprecating humor. Yeah. There's a reason. That's what I, yeah, that's yeah, what I was going to say next. I was like, dude, it's the self-deprecating humor you're talking about. That, but, but there it is right there. Exactly. I mean, like, don't put yourself down in a joke. That's basically just trying to get her approval again. Any behavior that tries to get her approval is going to be unattractive, whether you've been with her for one day or 100 years. And so cut that out and just be light and playful and keep having fun with her. And that's the key. So try to maintain some positive humor in your relationship. And then the fourth thing I call teamwork. And you could say a lot of different words, but the first antonym or opposite of teamwork at dictionary.com is divorce. And that's for a good reason. So teamwork just basically means that you see her as your equal teammate and that you guys are on the same team instead of adversaries that you're fighting against. 
And so a couple of ways that you can show teamwork that I can just give you right now is number one, listen to her without trying to solve her problems. That's a really good one for guys because we tend to want to solve things. That's kind of how our brain tends to work. But a lot of women enjoy working out their problems just by talking about them. And so respect her ability to solve her own problems and listen to her. And then if she asks you for advice, then you can give it to her. But don't give her unsolicited advice. Just listen without fixing her problems unless she wants you to. And that's already going to improve the relationships of a lot of guys if they just start doing that. Yeah, I think I think in general, too, just not only just with women, but I, I think unsolicited ad- advice is, <laughs> is very like like right now, if I just started giving you advice, like you'd be like, what? Yeah. Like maybe you'd like respect a little, but like, it's just, unless you ask, then it's not, it's not necessary. So I think just in general, that's, that's powerful. Okay. So we got, these are the four here, positive attention, respect, positive humor. And then is the last one here, teamwork. Teamwork. Yeah. And the last thing about that, that I want to say is yeah, yeah. be equitable when you work out your shared responsibilities. This goes a little deeper into the relationship side of it, but You know, like when you're working out, once you're together and you're living together, for example, when you're working out, like who's going to mow the lawn and who's going to cook and who's going to do dishes, just be equitable and work it out with her. If something's not working, talk about it. You don't have to divide everything exactly in half. They've actually shown that it's better to try to work your strengths and the things that you enjoy. So if you enjoy cooking, go for it and let her do the dishes afterward. But try to pick things. Don't, don't try to make it exactly 50-50. That's where a lot of people get hung up on this. It's not a war. You guys are on the same team and you're trying to accomplish all of these things together. And just flipping to the teamwork mindset is a huge deal for a lot of people. And so work out with her beforehand who's going to do everything and make sure you both agree to it. And just having those expectations will solve a lot of problems because a lot of times you know, you're, you're living with someone and then like two years from now, they did something in the beginning that you didn't really talk about. And now it just gets more and more and more annoying. And then you start building up resentment. So for example, for a woman, if the man is not taking out the trash and she expects you to do that, but you don't know that, then she can build up resentment for no reason, just because you weren't aware of the fact that she wanted you to take out the trash. So sit down as a team and decide who is going to do what and make sure you agree to it. And then if you need to adjust it in two months because it's not working, do that work to adjust it. And that little conversation of five or 10 minutes where you hammer out who's going to do what can serve to make your relationship so much better over time. And if you both know exactly what to expect and you're both keeping up your ends of the bargain, then she's going to tend to maintain her positive feelings towards you over time as well. Yeah. Yeah. So communication is key. Yeah. And I think that's overhyped in the relationship space. But in this particular context, when you're just talking about teamwork, absolutely. You, the, the key is to see you and your partner as a team and not enemies. And once you have that mindset switch, everything else follows from that. Yeah. 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 Not, not to where it's like, hey, I did this, therefore you owe me. Like now you have like a mm. relationship debt. L- let me talk about one last concept that I think is really important about sure. relationships sure. That, that you just touched on. Yeah. It's called covert contracts. Uh, Covert contracts is an unhealthy relationship behavior that can sabotage everything. And a covert contract is basically where you do something for someone expecting something in return, and you don't communicate specifically what that is to the other person. So you do something, you have an expectation of them doing something back, and they're not aware of it. It's called a covert contract. And if that person doesn't fulfill their end of your contract, you are going to feel resentful towards them, even though they have no way of knowing that you wanted that thing because you didn't make it explicit. So if you can cut out your covert contracts, if you're going to do something for someone, give that thing freely. Don't do it to get something back. If you're going to do something, do it because you want to. And once you start coming from that place of I have so much value and I take care of myself so well that when I give you something or I do something for you, it's just to do it for you. I don't expect anything in return. If both people have that attitude, that goes a long way to continuing to like each other after 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Yeah. 
Yeah, really powerful stuff. So just recapping, uh, you know, a lot of the stuff we went over was how do you get someone more interested, not someone, but how do you get this woman more interested in you once she's shown some base level of attraction? And then yep. once she has really started to fall for you or there is a high level of attraction here and what would be the time frame here before you start transitioning into the whole the four more things to keep her loving you what would be the time frame there typically on average <laughs> yeah the average is about two to three months okay so six, 60 to 90 days 60 or, to 90 days we yeah, continue yeah. the the positive attention the respect the positive humor and oh. also the the teamwork so the, the first 60 to 90 days is those first four qualities of the internal value. Yeah, internal yeah, yeah. Strength. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Got that. And then just move, I just didn't recap the first four. And then you switch after that. You switched once she actually feels strongly interested in you. And you can tell because most guys haven't experienced this. But when a woman is completely in love with you, she looks at you differently. Her eyes look different when she's looking at you. And you can kind of tell by her eyes and the way that she looks at you. She kind of looks at you with some admiration. Uh, and so once she's at that point, once she's looking at you with admiration and you can tell, then you switch into this relationship maintenance mode of these four things that keep her in love. And of course, there's more things that you can do, but these are really, really good places to start. Really good stuff. And just just to recap here, or not to recap, but to offer some additional books here. Your book here is The Attractor and Keeper. You can get that off your website here. But what what have been other books that have been influential in the writing of this book as well. Yeah. One, if you want to go really deep into what qualities to look for and how to decide if you have them or the, your partner has them, there's a really good book called the science of happily ever after by Tai Tashiro. That's, I, I really like that book because it, the guys listening right now are probably really familiar with the dating community. And so there's a lot of good books there too, but this one is a little bit more from like the academic side or the economic side. And I think it's a great book for guys to read. It's called The Science of Happily Ever After. So if you're looking for a girlfriend or a wife, definitely give that a read. Any others? Usually have about two or three. Sure. Let's see. Sorry about that. Give me a second if you don't mind. <laughs> yes. I, I read. You read so much that you can't think of one sometimes. Exactly. Yeah. I read so many books. It's crazy. Um, that one's really good. I want to come up with a really good one for guys. You mentioned Covert Contracts. Was that from No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Glover? Okay, so yeah, uh, no more, no more, Mister Nice Guy by Doctor Glover is a great book as well. I've read it. That's kind of like the internal strength and high internal value side. If you read that book, you're going to grow those qualities naturally, which I really love. I love the idea of a naturally attractive man, and no more, Mister Nice Guy will help you start valuing yourself more and acting like it. So I think that's a good one. And then if you have a lot of kind of relationship issues, there's a really good book by Doctor Harville Hendricks called Getting the Love That You Want. And that goes really deep. So if you have had some traumas before or you really struggle with kind of deeper relationship issues, that's a really, really good one for you. He's been a relationship researcher and coach for, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years now. And he's got a PhD. And he's the one who thinks that only 10% of relationships are happy, healthy, and functional. And so that's a really interesting book if you want to go super deep. All right. So we got some top books here. And then obviously check out, we got Jim's book here. You can go to jamesdwolf.com. So James, the letter D and then Wolf, W-O-L-F-E.com. You can get, check out his blog post. He's got a, a ton of stuff, not only on dating and relationships, but also on personal growth, lifestyle. He's got free resources. And then also the book Attract and Keep Her, which was the basis of this entire episode. James, thank you so much for being on the show here. Hey, Andrew, thanks so much for having me on. And again, congratulations on 300 episodes. That's amazing. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast. Hundreds of interviews and millions of downloads later, we're continuing to build an international movement and we're just getting started. So if you enjoyed this episode, go ahead and leave a helpful review in iTunes because it really helps the podcast grow so we can impact even more men in the world who need this. Guys, this is all about living with purpose, where every day you only do things that matter to you. You wake up, live with purpose, and take massive action towards the life you want. And always remember, love the life you have while creating the life of your dreams. Go to kfmfree.com to get a surprise bonus I've made for my listeners. Again, that's kfmfree.com for something that's changed my life and I'm offering it to you for free. Also, check out my Amazon best-selling books that I've written for you to help you crush life at kfmfree.com. 
kfmauthor.com. Again, that's kfmauthor.com to see all the books I've created to help you break through in life. This is your host, Andrew Farabee, founder of knowledgeformen.com, and I'll see you in the next episode.